G'day, I'm Mark. Today I'm going to run you through some of the great features of this Hafco Metal Master AL336D Deluxe Center Lathe. Now this machine has a great turning capacity of 300mm in diameter by 900 between centers. Or it can turn up to 450 millimeters by removing this gab bed section out. It also has a good size spindle ball of 38 millimeters that's right through the headstock. It has a 2 horsepower 240 volt motor that only requires a 10 amp power supply to run. It has features like a 2 axis digital readout, geared headstock, an enclosed gearbox, a safety chuck guard with a micro switch. Quick change tool post allowing tools to be quickly changed, a light, a flexible hose with coolant coming through it. Also included in this machine is a lead screw cover, a forward and reverse spindle lever and an emergency foot brake. Now this machine has a cast iron bedway that is induction hardened and also as ground finished on the top surfaces. Another handy includes this machine has is this thread chasing dial which enables you to locate your threads while thread cutting. Now up here is known as a compound slide and the reason for this is called a compound slide is because it can be adjusted in an angle for short tapers. So let me just show you how simple that is. We just grab the spanner under the two locking nuts and rotate to an angle that is required. For instance, we'll use 20 degrees. Lock it away. Now we can see that the compound is set at an angle and we can actually do short tapers. Now, a favorite feature of mine is this quick change tool post. Now it has four holders enabling you to change tools quickly and have each tool set up on center height. Let me show you how simple this is. Now this is a locking lever here. Now this locking lever will actually lock your tool holder in. So we undo this, which enables us to slide this out of the way and bring in a new one. And lock away. Now this height is adjusted to enable you to get center height simply by rotating this locking nut. And as you can see, this enables the change of the height. As I wind this down, you can see this sliding down. And then it's as simple of locking this away. Now once that's locked, that is set. And that will always be on center height every time it is put back in place. Now this quick change tool post can be rotated in a different angle just by loosening this nut. as well as it has two locations where you can put your tool holders on the left hand side and on the rear now depending on what you're doing and it's the same process loosen that slide out drop in here and lock out now for those wondering what these two items are they're actually called steadies now this one here is a fixed steady and this one here is a traveling steady and the reason why this one's called a traveling steady is because it travels with the saddle as you can see left and right now these are predominantly used for supporting smaller diameter material and longer pieces for argument's sake we may be turning a shaft between centers of say 600 millimeters now this one is a fixed steady which can slide along the bed and be locked in a more appropriate position to support the material and this one here can actually be set up right behind your tool so as you're cutting it's putting force on the rear of it to stop it from flexing. Now they're adjustable by just winding these up and down because obviously each diameter requires a different setting. Now this is a two point steady and the fixed is a three point steady and it also is adjusted in the same way. You also may be wondering how you remove your material from this three point or fix steady. It has a quick release nut here which basically allows you to swivel the top open and grab access to your material. So over here we have the tailstock on the machine. Now it slides up and down the bed and has a locking handle here to be locked in position where required. 
This handle here will actually wind the quill out and back and it has a travel of 100 millimeters. Now this accepts three Morse taper attachments. For example, you could put drilling chucks, dead centers, live centers, even drill bits with three Morse tapers can fit straight into here. And it also has a lock to lock the spindle in position, mainly used when using live centers. Now this tailstock is equipped with horizontal adjustment allowing you to offset the center line to turn tapers. Now having a two axis digital readout system just like this enables you to turn out very accurate work in the diameter as well as the Z. Now these actually work from scales that are mounted on the machine. Now this one here is in the X axis, which when I wind this handle here, you'll be able to see that this changes the display. And as well, there's a scale in the back of the machine, which is connected to the saddle for the longitudinal. And then when I wind this handle, you can actually see it changes that as well. Now taking a closer look at this DRO in the digits themselves, this unit can be set up in metric for millimetres or imperial with inches. And we can see by pushing this, it just converts straight over to imperial or back to millimetres. Now we can see if we wind this handle down, this is quite accurate because as we said we can turn accurate jobs. In millimetres it's accurate to 0 0.01 of a millimetre. and if we just wind this, we can see we can actually reduce this down by 0 0.01. That's how accurate this is. Just like to point out three of the safety features built in this machine. A chuck guard with a built-in mic switch, a foot brake with emergency stop, and the emergency stop itself. Now I'll demonstrate all three and you'll see how they all work. While the spindle is running and we lift the chuck guard up, it cuts power to the machine. Now, with the foot brake down below, it's simply by applying your pressure, cuts power and instantly stops the spindle because it actually has a brake in the back, like a car drum, and stops as more pressure you put on, the quicker it'll stop. And finally, the emergency stop, which automatically cuts power straight away in event of emergency. Now down here we have a swarf tray that conveniently slides out to empty all your swarf. It can be removed completely out and taken and emptied straight into your bin. And over here on the left hand side of the stand there's a door that gives you access to inside and there's a shelf that can store your small cutting tools. Now I'd just like to show you this great feature called the D14 cam lock system. It enables you to swap the chucks, for jaw and face plate very quickly. Now I'll demonstrate how this is done. It has three locking tabs in the back. You basically loosen all three, the chuck comes out and then we put the new chuck in. One, two, chuck swaps out quite easily and we'll fit the four jaw chuck in. Always holding pressure on the chuck so it's home and we nip up each one lightly at first and then we secure tight all three. Now this ensures the chuck is on straight and tight. And there you have it. Now let's just take a look at the control panel. It has a power on, a jog button, a coolant switch, an emergency stop. This AL336D Deluxe Slave has 18 spindle speeds from 65 revs per minute right up to 1810 revs per minute. Just like to demonstrate the high speed of 1810 RPM, which is set on A2, and our gear levers are set on A and 2, which will achieve this. Now let's just activate the spindle by the lever and we'll see how this machine runs. So 
So that is at 810 RPM, quite smooth. Now let's go down the other way and set it to say 100 RPM, which is B1. And it's simply by moving these levers, which are the gear levers, into B and 1. And there we have 100 RPM in forward. And we can also do this in reverse. Now to achieve 18 speeds on this machine, it has a double row pulley system and is denoted by one and two. One will allow you to get ABC speeds along here and two allows you to get ABC speeds along here. Now let's have a look in the back to show you how these pulleys are. Just take off this side cover so you can see the pulleys in the back here. Taking a closer look in the back, we have the double row pulley system. This is actually set up in position one, which is the high speed. And to achieve the lower speed, it's a simple matter of changing the belt into the rear pulleys, which will go into the slower speed. Also fitted to this machine is a micro switch, which is interlocked to the belt cover. In the event of the machine guard being removed, the power of the machine is disabled. Over here we have a 38mm spindle ball and we have the gear train which is driven from the headstock that drives the gearbox. And the enclosed gearbox here will actually run your feeding and thread cutting. So let's just take a closer look how the thread cutting works. Now this machine is capable of metric thread cutting as well as imperial thread cutting. So let me show you how simple it is to activate the gears into one of the threads that we're going to choose. For instance, let's choose 1.5 millimeter pitch. Now it's represented by A2 and across here M2. And also the gearing will need to be set up in this section as displayed. Now again, 1.5 pitch, A2, M2. Now moving these dials, A2 is simply by rotating A and 2. Now, sometimes you may require to hit the jog button to actually allow these gears to change. There we go. A. Two. As we said earlier, M2. Now that's set on S. M. Two. Now that is set to actually cut 1.5 millimeter pitch. Now this great machine also has automatic feed, longitudinal as well as cross feed. And it is in millimetres per revolution or in inch per revolution for both of these tables. Now it works in the same way as thread cutting, it's simply by lining up these gears. So if we want 0.149, it's A5 on the dials as well as S2 on the dials. Now this whole assembly is called the saddle and over here is the forward and reverse switch for the spindle. So earlier we talked about thread cutting and uh, feeding. Let me just show you how these handles actually activate that. So I'll put safety glasses on first. Okay, here we're going to put the threading engagement on which actually will engage the saddle to move in that direction towards the chuck. As you can see, this lever here activates the lead screw for thread cutting. Now for feeding in longitudinal as well as cross, just quickly put it into feeding mode. Now this lever here will activate the feeding. And it's demonstrated just like this. So down, as we can see, it is feeding towards the centre of the lathe and up across and up automatically feeds the machine towards the chuck. We can actually do this in reverse simply by changing this lever over here. So as mentioned before, this is the lever that actually changes the direction of your feeding or threading and it's shown here by the direction anti-clockwise and clockwise. Now this machine includes a three-jaw chuck, a four-jaw chuck, a face plate. Now the three-jaw chuck has reversible jaws. As you can see, 
the jaw is stepped this way, inwards, and with the reversible jaws they are stepped outwards. And that's a three jaw self-centering chuck. Now the four jaw is an independent chuck. Now what that means is each jaw independently moves on its own. As you can see, I'm winding this, that jaw independently moves. And so forth, this independently jaw will move as well. So great for holding square material. Now also this machine includes a two dead centers and a headstock reducing bush which will actually go into the headstock. Change gears for thread cutting, some allen keys and spanners, four tool holders, a toolbox that stores all this in other than the chucks and an instruction manual. I'm Mark, thanks for watching. To find out more detailed specification on this great product please visit our website.